Today we need to talk about the Osmo Pocket 3 and its menu settings, how we can use this to our advantage and not get lost, and we'll hop in the Mimo app and see what we do in there, and how we can use it and not get lost, what we can do on the Pocket 3 itself versus what we can do on the Mimo app, and vice versa, what can't be done on the Mimo app that can be done straight out of the camera, because there is at least one thing that I've come across that can't do on here that you can do on there. Let's get right into the Pocket 3 first, and then we'll get over to the Mimo app and check it out. Right when you get it out of the box, you'll just flick the screen sideways and it'll turn right on. Then it's going to ask you to go ahead and download the Mimo app right after it tells you to pick your language that you're going to be using your Pocket 3 in. Go ahead and scan the QR code if you need to download the Mimo app. Now, if you have an Android phone, you're definitely going to have to accept downloading apps that aren't in the App Store. And I'm not sure if the same goes for Apple but I'm just going to go through the menu going uh, kind of clockwise around here. First, there's the battery icon up here. Now that'll show you what you have left for battery life in your external battery, in your ex extra battery, as well as in the pocket itself. Then you have your zoom settings and that'll just zoom you in, zoom you out if you slide up and down on it. And if you tap it, it changes it to a tilt. So you get tilt up and down with your pocket, tap it again and you get your zoom back. Now, when you have it tapped so that it's tilt, you then have your zoom option with your joystick down here. So your joystick will now zoom in and zoom out. Now it is nice because there is a setting that I'll show you in a little bit where you can change the speed of that zoom on the joystick. But let's just change that back to zoom here. And then beneath that, you have your rotate where it's gonna rotate. So now we see us, rotate it back and um, that's your quick rotate. Otherwise, you got to triple tap on your joystick to do the same thing. And anytime you see this white box show up on your screen, you can tap it away or uh, it'll usually give you information, but you can tap it to make it go away if you're trying to do something quickly. Before we leave this side of the camera, we're going to swipe over and this gives you your manual settings for your camera as well as your microphone settings. So in your camera settings, you have your exposure. When you're in your exposure, you just hit auto to be automatic and hit manual to be manual. When you are on automatic, you can adjust how much variation you want your ISO to utilize, as well as if you want it over or under. Next to exposure is your white balance. So you can go auto or manual on white balance. You have your glamour effect, which I'll show you how to mess with once we get into the Mimo app. You can turn it on and off from here, but you set your parameters in the Mimo app. And then you have your color profile. So right now I'm in D-Log M and that is the 10 bit or you have normal and then HLG is 10 bit and HLG is hybrid log gamma, which is basically shooting in HDR. I like to shoot in the D-Log M 10 bit and there's a way in the Mimo app to uh, convert this over to Rec 709 and I'll show you that. Then you have your focus modes and you have your image adjustment. Focus modes, there's three different focus modes and I can talk more about what they're used for in a different video. If you guys have questions about that, leave a comment. Otherwise, uh, let's go into custom image adjustment. So I have mine on custom right now. You can go default, but in custom, I have mine at negative two sharpness and plus one in noise reduction. Oh, if you're not seeing any of this on the screen, also hit this pro button up here because without the pro button selected, you don't have all these options. Under your microphone, while you don't have your wireless mic set up, this is about what it looks like. So you got channel, you can do stereo or mono, you can turn your noise reduction on or off, and you can change which direction the mic is using. On the bottom of the screen, we have where you can adjust your perimeters within whatever shoot mode you're in. So right now, because we're in video, we have where it's showing 4K 60, I swipe up, and I can adjust that. So I can adjust my resolution, my frame rate, and then you can adjust if you want a 16 by nine or your other option is one by one. But if we were in something like, uh, which I'll show you this button over here, which changes your shooting mode, say we were in slow-mo for instance, and then we swiped up, we would get different settings. So we can change our resolution, but down here we're changing our speed, like how much we want it to slow-mo. We'll do a slow-mo test in another video so you guys can kind of see its slow-mo capabilities, but it shoots some pretty fun slow-mo. Um, this funky little icon over here is like your smart shoot modes. And if I click it, it's gonna give me my face auto detection, which basically it's searching for a face within the box on the screen. 
And then this fun one gives you your detection where you can actually select where on the screen. It's gonna be another situation where you can get rid of that white box. So you can detect where on the screen you want your subject once you start auto tracking them. And then at the bottom is the spin mode, which here I did an example of the 180 in this last video that I did. And then here's an example of the 90 right on my face. What is happening? I don't know. The difference is that 180, it aims up and then it does a full 180 degrees. And the 90 degrees, it just is angled like this. And then it just rotates this way. And then up here, we're just gonna see what we have available on our SD card. The last thing on this screen that you access really is over here you can see the videos that you've already shot and scroll through them choose if you want to delete them or heart them or you can find out information about how you shot them out here you can change it to a grid so you can see more videos and scroll through them easier you also can control how loud you're hearing it out of your pocket and then swiping down from the top is going to give you the rest of our stuff and this main menu right here is kind of like a quick grab of some things. So like important to be able to grab quickly and change would be like your follow modes, which I've said in a previous video, I wish there was an option for that out on the main screen, but it's still a quick grab here. Then you tap your follow mode and change your follow mode. That's nice. Back to go back, we'll just go up. So we have FT selfie mode, which means it'll face track when you're in selfie mode. So if it's facing you, it'll automatically try to find your face and face track you. You have your screen brightness is the sunlight here. So this one here decides what your screen rotate is going to do. You can turn on screen rotate and capture. So if you have screen rotate and capture on, it will immediately start capturing footage when you rotate your screen and it turns on, it will start recording. Now you can set it up to do any of them, like go cut one of your customs right off the bat. I have mine set up to do the last setting. So whatever I was filming in last is what it's gonna do when it comes up. Over here, this is going to be how you set your customs. So you would be in your camera, you'd set everything how you want, come up here, go here and do add a custom and it will create a custom off of what you had your settings at. Now, before I go in here, because this is really the next one, we got gimbal speed. Then this is going to decide what orientation you're filming at. I have mine set here to switch automatically when I rotate the screen. But if I click it, it will change it to what landscape now. And if I hit it again, it will be in the vertical. But if I do this, then it will all just switch as I rotate the screen. So going into the settings here, which is a nut for some reason, usually it's like a, uh, like a gear but it's a nut on here, but quite a lot of stuff still accessible in here. When you have your wireless mic hooked up, there's a lot of fun stuff in here about the mic. Gimbal startup direction, so where it's gonna go. I also put that as last setting. Um, your rotate screen power off, I put it as never because I don't want mine to power off when I rotate it down. I just want it to change to vertical shooting because you easily can power it off by just uh, pressing and holding your record button for like two seconds. On the go connections where you're like hardwire connecting it to a phone and you got wireless connections, you've got wearable mode, and wearable mode is going to be for like that adapter that uh, makes it so that it connects to like action camera attachments. It's so that it operates a specific way for when you're wearing it. Gimbal calibration, if your gimbal's being wonky, you calibrate it um, and it walks you through that when you click it. I don't need to do that right now. Joystick speed, so that's where you can change how fast it does stuff, so how fast it zooms and how fast it actually like moves the gimbal around. I find that slower is smoother for a lot of that stuff because this joystick does kind of click. It's either go or don't go. It doesn't like ease into it. So I find a little bit slower is better for me. So I put mine both down to two, but you could crank either of them up if you needed to, or if you wanted to, um, just for whatever scenario you have. So you got your sound and that's the sound of like what all your buttons do. Like when you uh, hit record, how loud that is. When you're selecting stuff, how loud it is. I have mine on low, but you can actually silence it. I do enjoy hearing it some. I just don't want to like everybody around me to hear it. Then I always turn my grid on. Like you should know your rule of thirds and utilize your rule of thirds when filming. So I have my grid on. The capability of having it's just amazing. Anti flicker, I believe, it only works if you're in um, automat, if you're in auto mode. Then you got time codes. Time codes are kind of cool if you're trying to pair up your camera with other cameras. If you're doing a multi-camera shoot, having time codes is an amazing thing to have. That's just definitely more of a pro setting and most people aren't gonna use it. Name management, that's just like changing how your files are named. 
You got screen off when recording. I put mine to never because I'd always want to see my screen while recording, but you could probably save some battery by having it turn off. If you're just gonna have it set and recording, that's probably a good thing. Auto power off, I put mine at five minutes. It's just kind of a battery saver thing if you forget. The LED light, having it turn on when you're doing stuff, it's green right now, it goes red when you record. Continue last live stream. So if you're live streaming from the Mimo app, um, this would be how you go in and just like come go back to it. I'm not re really well versed in the live streaming right now. Um, I'm gonna mess with it quite a bit more in the future, but I don't do a ton of live streaming. You got your language, you can change your language at any time for formatting your FD card and factory reset device info and the compliance information. All that, now let's get into the Mimo app. And I wanna start by saying what you cannot do that I haven't figured out how to do in the Mimo app, but I can do on here. That is your dynamic framing. Now, when the Mimo app's up, you can do it on here still because the screen still shows on here while the Mimo app's up, but I can't figure out how to set it on the Mimo app and actually control it from there. And maybe it's hidden somewhere. And if you know of it in the comments, I don't know why you're watching this if you already know how to operate it. But if you know of it and I didn't get it, like let me know where it's at in the Mimo app. But let's get in the Mimo app. All right. We are in the Mimo app now. And as you can see, the colors in the Mimo app look crisp and, and kind of somewhat vibrant for being done in Dcinelog. And we're gonna get to that in a minute because there's a setting in here where we can see what it can look like graded. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. If we start on the left of the screen, you got home, which is gonna take you out to like your home page here. To get back into it, you just hit device. Going down, we got the manual settings or you can switch to auto. So that's gonna be your ISO shutter and then your EV value. What resolution you're shooting in and what have you. If, um, you got your glamor effect, which we'll play with in a second, but I do wanna show you the last kind of menu spot. It will come back up to glamor effect and I'll play with it. So this bottom button, um, gives you three different kind of menu options. Um, and then this top one is gonna be mostly like camera stuff. So we've got uh, the grid lines, which I have on. Focus mode, white balance is custom. You click it and it gives you the option to go auto or go custom. Then we have your uh, color mode. So I'm in D-Log M right now. This button down here below it says color recovery. If I click it off, it's going back to like my more muted. I'm just gonna click out here real quick. It's more muted of a color profile. And this is the D-Log. The color recovery is going to be kind of like a Rec. 709 conversion. And it's just kind of showing you the LUT on the screen. So you're seeing what it can look like once you've added a little punch of color and some contrast back to your footage. So it kind of doesn't tell you what's going into audio, you just have to know. So channel is stereo, noise reduction, some of the same stuff we saw in one of the other screens on the main one. But what you do get here that you definitely don't get on the pocket itself is the overexposure alert on this light right there. You're seeing the overexposure alert and that is your zebras. And those can be distracting, especially because there's sometimes you don't care that something bright like a light is um, overexposed in your shot. Um, histogram, I like to have mine on, but it tends to shut off between uses. From left to right, it shows you your exposures in your shot. So it's darker to the left, brighter to the right. Right now, my shot is mostly on the lower end of exposure. And then I could, you know, utilize that to get the correct balance that I want by changing. So pops it more to the middle. And let's see where our EV's at. Our EV's at plus three. So you can change that, get your exposure exactly balanced. It's pretty balanced exposure right now. Although, as you can see, my overexposure warning showing that window behind me is overexposed and the lights overexposed. Now, I'm finding with D-Log M, it's easier to bring up exposure later than to recover those highlights. So maybe underexpose a little bit, and then if you are gonna do any editing and post, you can always bring up the exposure face. If you're not going to do any editing and post though, I definitely say, go ahead and expose for your face because your face or whatever the subject is is what you want to expose for also across the bottom of the screen it shows you like all of your settings and where you have everything set at this is your gimbal now easy is what i would have it on because what easy does is it allows you 360 degree gimbal movement it's actually smoother moving your gimbal on here than it is actually moving it with the joystick on the camera. <laughs> if you take that off, then it takes it from being a single joystick to being a dual joystick. 
And so this side gives me my tilt, this side gives me my pan. I like the easy controls. It gives it so it's one, your one thumb has can do it. And then going down, this is kind of like your device information. We kind of went all over all this stuff, nothing special on here that wasn't in the actual device itself. And then over on our far right, we'll go far right in the black is where you change your camera modes. But what's added in here that wasn't in the camera itself is the live stream. Um, on the Pocket 2, you had a story mode. I kind of hope they add it for some people. It was a lot of fun to use the story mode. Not practical for people that do a lot of their own editing, but still, it was a, it was a good time. Other than the black over here, the, other, the top on the right is you're flipping your camera around. And recenter is below that. Record buttons below that. Your gimbal modes are right here. So you got the speed of your gimbal on the left, follow. And then and if you need to know what the gimbal modes do, you hit the information one. And I'm going to record with the glamour. Let's go back and get the glamour and let's mess with it. So if we click our glamour effect, the off is in Chinese symbol. So if I just click down here, it's going to automatically add all the ones that I already had. Um, so skin smoothening up and down. You can see that when I do it high, it smoothens it a lot. Now the problem here is when you transfer your files to your computer, as far as I can tell so far, it does not add the glamour effect on. It's only available for when you're downloading from your phone. So I'm gonna kick some glamour stuff up. We're gonna brighten my face a little bit. We're gonna slim it, cause you know, got fat face. We're gonna make my eyes a little bigger. I'm just gonna kind of extreme it a little bit. Get rid of circles under my eyes. And that way we can show how you can download it. Let's thin out my nose, make my mouth bigger. Is that smaller or bigger? Or small. I like a bigger mouth. Uh, teeth whitening. I drink a lot of coffee, so teeth whitening is important to me. You can see it change. Um, lipstick. We're, like I said, we're just going to go a little extreme with it. We're going to add blush. I'm going to make my eyebrows real deep. Oh, yeah. Darkening my eyebrows. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to record for a second and then we're going to see how we can download this. All right, so I'm recording with the glamour effect on and this is what you're seeing. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go in and stop the recording and we'll go in like we're going to download it to our phone. So at the bottom right, you now see it. Now, if I do a bunch of other stuff, that'll go away and turn back into the uh, pit, like the picture of just the play button. So here is what the video looks like. All right, so it's showing the glamour effect on it right now. But every time I've taken my glamour effect and transferred it to my computer, it's been unnoticeable. I'm going to have to rotate my screen. So if I rotate my screen and do it this way, I get an extra um, button at the bottom and that is this middle button down here now what this middle button does is it allows me to rec 709 convert so that button that says D log down there if I click it it converts and gives me the real color for a rec 709 conversion and I think that's a good way to export and be able to just immediately upload so I could turn off my glamour if I chose that I didn't want to do that otherwise I can hit export and then it will export it to my phone with all of that added. So with the Rec. 709 conversion on it and with the Glamour on it. Now beyond that Rec. 709, we can also add more to it. So I'll show you in just a second. So if I just didn't hit the Rec. 709, then I don't have to do it. Otherwise, there's also these filters over here. Obviously, don't pump them all the way up. Also, if you didn't shoot in the Glamour effect, you can add it after the fact. For instance, this one, and I can add a Glamour effect to it. So add that, log conversion, add filter if I want to. Once I've done that, I can export it just like that. Obviously like this isn't a good example, but it shows you you can do some of that stuff to take care of any of that color editing that you don't wanna to have to do in post. Um, so here, I'm turning this off because I basically never use that, but some people might wanna use it and you can use it very subtly and I believe Whatever you set it to on here translates to the pocket once you are shooting with the pocket um, and not having it on. So when you turn on Glamour on there, it should apply all of the effects that you have applied on the app in the pocket itself. Not 100% on that, but um, it only makes sense because it tells you when you hit it on there to open up the app to do the stuff. You don't run out of stuff to do with these cameras. And I felt the same way about the Pocket 2, but I'm, I'm seriously, 
more excited about this than I ever was the Pocket 2. If you follow my channel at all, you know I shot like so much footage with my Pocket 2. I took it on two different cross country road trips. Like, oh my God, I, I've just, I, I shot so much with it. And I'm about to sell it, but I wanted to just make sure I had the, the appropriate amount of time to compare it to the Pocket 3 and enjoy them both together and kind of see the differences in the upgrade. Guys, if this video helped you at all, do hit the like button. Sorry, I rambled a bunch. Subscribe to the channel to get more videos on the Pocket 3 and more budget videography tips, tricks, all that fun stuff. Go check out my first video on the Pocket 3 because I covered a lot of stuff on it and go shoot something awesome with whatever camera you have on hand and because whatever camera you have on hand is your best camera. Don't forget to post your work. Peace out. I'll see you next week with another one. Later.